Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist. The evening arrived. The boys took their places. The master in his cook's uniform stationed himself at the copper. His pauper assistants ranged themselves behind him. The gruel was served out and a long grace was said over the short commons. The gruel disappeared. The boys whispered each other and winked at Oliver while his next neighbours nudged him. Child as he was, he was desperate with hunger and reckless with misery. He rose from the table and advancing to the master, basin and spoon in hand, said, somewhat alarmed at his own temerity, Please, sir, I want some more. The master was a fat, healthy man, but he turned very pale. He gazed in stupefied astonishment on the small rebel and for some seconds and then clung for support to the copper. The assistants were paralysed with wonder, the boys with fear. What? said the master at length in a faint voice. Please, sir, replied Oliver, I want some more. The master aimed a blow at Oliver's head with the ladle, pinioned him in his arms and shrieking aloud for the beadle. The board was sitting in solemn conclave when Mr Bumble rushed into the room in great excitement and addressing the gentleman in the high chair said, Mr Limpkins, I beg your pardon sir, Oliver Twist has asked for more. There was a general start. Horror was depicted on every countenance. For more, said Mr Limpkins, compose yourself, Bumble, and answer me distinctly. Do I understand? that he asked for more. After he had eaten the supper allocated by the dietary. He did, sir, replied Bumble. That boy will be hung, said the gentleman in the white waistcoat. I know that boy will be hung.